probability has to lie from zero to one. So if you ever get an answer of negative for probability or an answer bigger than one for probability, something has gone wrong. Go back and fix it. The probability of an event happening is the total number of successful outcomes divided by the total number of outcomes. And that's a formula that the learners need to understand. That's what probability means. So when you see the word probability, you need to know what are the total number of ways you can do it and what are the successful number of ways. And if I think for those of you who, who were on just before we started formally, that question with the squares, where you had to get the probability that the two squares shaded were not next to each other or touching, that definitely you need to think of this formula as you're doing that. And we will discuss it in the webinar. Probabilities always add up to one, which will also come up as we go. I firmly believe that foundations should be rock solid. So to spend time on the basics, I never think is wasted time at all, because the more solid the foundation is, the more quickly you can build the walls. So spend time making sure your learners understand this. OK, sorry, back a slide. Don't assume that your learners know everything. So a coin has two outcomes, heads or tails. Well, our coins don't have a head and a tail. So one actually has to say to the learners, well, you know, when we talk about coins in probability, you talk about a head and a tail. And the one side of the coin is heads and the other side of the coin is tails. And there's a chance of a half getting each of those. A dice, a fair dice has six outcomes. One, two, three, four, five, six. There might be some learners who don't know what dice are. And it might well be a case of take a dice into class and show them what a dice looks like. Two dice. They need to understand that rolling a two and a one is very different to rolling a one and a two. And we're going to get an example just now where I'll, I'll chat about that. But that's a two and a one and a one and a two are different and they need to know that. What about with cards? Well, a lot of our learners know cards, but there are many of them who don't. And they're the ones who tend to be quite quiet. And you don't know where all the others say, yeah, no, we play lots of cards. There might be a quiet child in the class who actually doesn't know anything about spades, clubs, diamonds. So you need to explain to them that there are two colors, black and red. They're four suits. Which ones are black? Which ones are red? Because you need to know that. Each suit has 13 cards. And you need to specify, if necessary, whether an ace is high or low. And I think with any kinds of questions in a maths exam, one's got to think, what are you actually testing? So in this, te in this section, you're testing probability. So if in a question I've got later on where I say to you something about number, the cards that are less than five, you don't want a child to be thinking, is ace less than five or is it bigger than five? Where is it counting? Because in some games, ace is high, other games, aces are low. So you don't want to trick them with a language problem, you actually want to test their probability. So you do need to tell them if ACEs are high or low. OK, so let's have a look at the first question. There are 20 tickets in a hat, numbered 1 to 20. One ticket is taken out. Determine the probability of taking out. And grade 10s, whether they've done it during COVID or not, I still would do this with my grade 10s, just to check, because you'll notice a whole lot of words here. Less than, not bigger than. Is that the same? Is it not the same? Odd numbers, factors, multiples, prime numbers. All questions that we can ask, and if they've forgotten what they are, they're not going to be able to do the really simple questions. So 20 tickets in a hat, one ticket is taken out. Determine the probability of taking out each of those. My advice to your learners is to write out all 20 numbers. Yes, you don't have to because it does take time, but you can sit with your fingers and you can count. But then you've got seven questions that are coming up here. So now I've got to think with each one, whereas if I write those numbers out once, I can see very easily what's the probability of getting a number less than five. There are four of them, so it's four over 20. And we always need to simplify the fractions. If it's a number not bigger than five, these two are not the same. Less than five means I can't include the five. Not bigger than five means I exclude from six onwards. 
So the first one is four out of 20. The second one is five out of 20. Odd numbers, factors of 20, multiples of seven, prime numbers, remembering of course, which they don't ever remember, that one is not prime. And then a number greater than 10, but less than 16. And you get all the probabilities and you can have a look at these in your own time. The second question, in a deck of cards, two is the lowest and the ace is the highest card. So I've actually told you where the ace is because there is one question that is going to come here. One card is chosen. What is the probability of randomly drawing an ace, a red card, a diamond, a card smaller than five, which is why I need to know where that ace is. Any picture card, which is also a club, a seven and a black card, a seven or a black card. And here is coming in these words, which are so important in probability, and they have very, very different meanings. So there's the next question. But if you have a learner who doesn't know what a deck of cards is, he or she won't be able to answer this at all. So it is important to go through a deck of cards quite carefully. Okay, I've got a picture up there, but I do not suggest your learners write down all the cards. I actually suggest they do spend some time playing cards, not necessarily in class, but then at least they get to know what is what. So what's the chance of getting an ace? There are four aces in a pack of cards of 52. Oh, the other thing, jokers. No matter how many times I used to tell my class that there are 52 cards in a pack, they kept saying, no, they're not, they're jokers. As far as probability is concerned, there are 52 cards in a pack. The jokers do not form part of a pack of cards for probability. You use jokers in some games, but there are many other games where you don't use jokers. So the jokers are not part of the cards. There are 52 cards. A red card, they're 26 out of 52. A diamond, 13 out of 52. Any card smaller than five, that's where I need to know I don't want the ace. So it's two, three, four, and they're four different suits. That's how I get the 12. Any picture card, which is also a club, so it's Jack, Queen, King of clubs. Then a seven and a black card. So there's the seven of spades, the seven of clubs. And those are the only two I can get. So it's two out of 52, which I simplify. A seven or a black card. OK, so I have 13 clubs. I have 13 spades. I have a seven of hearts, I have a seven of diamonds. If I count those together, I get 13 plus 13, which is 26, and I get those two there, and so I get an answer, okay? If I were to count four sevens and 13 clubs, 13 spades, I would get 30 cards, but it's actually only 13 plus 13 plus the two extras. So you've got to be very careful with it. You cannot count the two black sevens as a seven and a black card. And that's where one of our formulae is going to come in, which we will get to, and I'll remind you of this example. Question three, there are 296 students on a roll at a school. If a student's name is chosen at random from the roll, the probability that the student will be a boy is five over eight. How many girls are in the school? Well, you can do this in two ways, and this is still one of the basics. One way you can do it is say, if five eighths are boys, then three eighths will be girls. And three eighths of 296, which is the total, you'll get the number of girls. My second option is I can say, the number of boys is five eighths of 296, and I actually calculate how many boys there are, and then I subtract from the total to get the number of girls. So this is still in my basics that I would strongly suggest you spend time with, with the grade tens in particular. Question four, two dice are rolled simultaneously. Determine the probability that at least one five is rolled. The sum of the two dice equals nine. The sum of the two dice is less than seven. At least one of the numbers is an even number. Both of the numbers are a factor of eight. OK, and again, this is where you've got to remember that one and two is 
different to two and one. And what I suggest you do with this, just like the tickets in the hat, I would suggest your learners write out every option. So one, 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 two, one, three, one, four, one, five, one, six, two, one, two, 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 three, two, four, et cetera, et cetera. Because then very quickly they'll see that there are 36 options. What I've done in my solutions is I've actually done the table every single time. I do not suggest your learners do that. I really don't. That would take far too long. But I would suggest they write it out once. Why I've done it every time is because then I've highlighted. So at least one five, which means I can have one five, two five, three five, four five, five five, six five, or five one five, two five, three five, four. I've had that already, five six. In other words, I've got 11 out of 36. If I want the sum equaling 9, I can see very quickly from my table I've written out 3, 6, 4, 5, 5, 4, 6, 3. And 6, 3 and 3, 6 are different. 3 on the first dice, 6 on the second dice is different to 6 on the first dice and 3 on the second dice. So I've got four of those. A sum less than 7. There are all my possibilities. So I can get 15 out of 36. And again, as I said, all of them you need to simplify. 4.4, at least one number is even. So you can have both numbers even, but one of them at least has to be even. There are an awful lot of them. So you can either do it this way and get 27 out of 36, or you can count which ones have no even numbers and get nine, which means they're 36. Out of the 36, they're 27 left and you get your answer. Both numbers are factors of eight. Your factors of eight are one, two, four, and eight. So I need anything that has both of the numbers being one, two, and four, because of course eight doesn't come into a dice. And there are my options. I get nine out of 36. Okay. If we look at the warm up questions, for those of you who were, didn't join at quarter to um, four, this was the first question. I roll two fair dice. There's a five on at least one of the dice. So I've told you there is a five on at least one of the dice. Determine the probability that there's a five on both dice. Now this is different to the question we had before where I had all 36. This one I've said to you, there is a five on at least one of the dice, which means my sample space is only the highlights. So the only, the number, total number of outcomes that has at least a five is 11. How many of those is there five on both dice? Just one of them. So the probability for that one is one over 11. So slight variation where you had to think a little bit, but there was that one. The second one I gave you before we started, two spinners below are spun and the numbers shown are added together. Determine the probability that the sum of the two numbers is even. You can do this in two ways. You can either do a tree diagram. So the first spinner has two evens and two odds. So the probability of getting an even on the first spinner is two out of four, and an odd on the first spinner is also two out of four. The second spinner has one even and two odds. So the chance of getting an even on the second spinner is one out of three, and odd is two out of three, and one out of three, and two out of three. How do you get the sum of two numbers to be even? Well, to, for two numbers to be even, they must both be even, or they must both be odd, because an odd plus an even, two plus three is five, which is odd. So the only way I'll get the sum of two numbers to be even is if it's even, even, so it's that branch of the tree, or odd, odd. And remember on a tree diagram, we multiply going along the branches, so two over four times one over three, two over four times two over three, and then we add the two branches that we could use and the probability was a half. There is an alternative. I could take the one spinner, one, two, five, six, the other spinner, three, four, nine, add all the sums. I get a total of 12 options. How many of them have an even sum? I've highlighted those. There's six of them. So either way, you can do it.
Okay, so that was all the basics. And I would spend time with your learners. I honestly don't think it's a waste of time because, as I say, the more solid the foundation, the more quickly you can build that wall on top. If you found this video useful, give it a like and subscribe to our channel so you don't miss any new episodes. Follow us on Instagram or Facebook to stay on top of the latest TAS news and launches. So that's it for now from The Answer Series, your key to exam success.